Hi everyone, welcome back. Now you can use this both on the Mac and Windows. It's called Pro Study. Now they put it online based in the cloud, so that way it makes it much easier to use and works between different devices as well. It's just as intuitive and easy to use as the application version, both on the Mac and Windows. So let's get stuck in. So first thing I need to do is actually open up your browser. You need to log in. You should have a license key. So log into Pro Study Home. Then at the top here, you'll have account. I've got dashboard. I'm already logged in. So make sure you sign in here first. Once you're in, come down to the right. Now, as I said, they're kind of fading out the Pro Study Windows and Pro Study Mac to make one option, which is online based, which now be called Pro Study Online. Tap on that and select at the top, accept. And when you start, you get loads of demo options at the top here. But I'm going to show you how to add one yourself and start from scratch. As you can see here quickly, these are called tiles and you've got different research information and options at the bottom as well, where you can filter stuff and even pin stuff that's important. But what I'm going to do is come up here, tip minimize. I'm going to minimize them all and come to the left. Now, before we do anything else, I probably recommend you installing the Pro Study extension. So come up. It's a little extension that goes into your browser. And type Pro Study Extension in there for me and do a search. Choose the top link, select that. So once you're in a Chrome Web Store, it's called Pro Study Online. I've already installed it at the top here. So make sure you install it and go to your extensions and then allow it on the right here with the pin. So you'll be able to see it. So I can close that, it's already done. So now I'm ready to do a bit of research. So I'm going to open up. A website I found earlier. Now we've got the extension top right here but what I recommend you do before you actually open it and log in is create your own projects and categories. So let's go back to the original one here. This is the easiest method of doing it. Click plus at the top and we can add a new one. So I'm just going to put psychology. The little tick here, click that. I've now got main projects. Now you can start adding categories underneath with the plus. I should pop cognitive in there. Choose a the colour. It's a good idea to use the colours because it separates your topics. Makes it a little bit easier for you to organise and see and then click the little tick. That's the first option. Done. See it says zero because we've added no information or research in there yet. Select plus. Let's do another one quickly. Let's put in Sigmund Freud. Say you're doing children and Freud for example. Now on the right, we've got an option here. You can re-edit it, copy it, or even move it or delete it because you might want to move it into another project. There we go. I can close that. I'm good to go. Now I'll come back to this in a minute, these options here. But what I want to do quickly is go to the website and grab some information. So I'm going to scroll down. Now we've got the plugin here that we can use. So make sure you log in. But what I want to do is highlight some text for me that you might want to use. And do a right click on it. Can you see save content to pro study? Now I've got my folder there, look, underneath psychology. So I can select whether I want it in cognitive or child Freud. I'm just going to go cognitive for now. And that will add it and that will come down again and do the same thing. Right click and then you can save that. Let's put that in the second one down. Now I'm going to open up the plugin extension at the top. Click the drop down menu, make sure I'm on psychology because that's what I've added. And you can see I've got my two categories to work with there. Now I want to scroll up a little bit because you might want the image. So click on the extension, screenshot, hold the left button and create a rectangle around what you want. And there you go, you can grab it. Just check the information for that, so you have to add the author. And remember, if you're using Harvard, put the name of the website in if you can't find an author. Project, I'm fine with that, psychology, and I want it in cognitive. Add any additional comments, and you might want some additional comments regarding that image, where it's come from, link, and then publish date. So make sure you put your publish date in there if you can find it as well. There's a calendar on the right here to help you with that as well. And then you've got publisher and place of publication. But obviously that just refers to books. So select save. 
and it's done. Click OK. So now I'm grabbing some information as I'm working. Now what I'm going to do is come up the top and I'm going to select, I found this PDF from Google Scholar earlier. You might want to work with this. So I'm going to scroll down. Now if you worked with PDFs before, you know they can be a bit of a pain when it comes to editing and highlighting. You can open a PDF in a Word document and it converts it into a Word format for you anyway. But I want to work on using the extension. So again, I'm going to choose where I want to put it in. I'm going to leave it in Cognitive and select Screenshot. Now I can create a rectangle around the text that I want to work with. So I'm going to highlight all that. Now you've got an option here again, filling in your details. Make sure you do that. But OCR. Optical character recognition because it's an image that will change it into fonts for your standard text, which means now you can edit it and use the information better. So, a really great option when you're working with image files as well. And again, make sure you choose what project you want it in and cognitive or child void. There we go, click save. And at the top, it says successfully created content. Now that's how easy it is to add information. Let me go to the extension again to show you. You can also bookmark web pages. So if I tap on that, that will bookmark it for you automatically. I'll show you how to access that in a minute. And you can see at the bottom it says successfully saved pages bookmark. You can also use a camera to take a snapshot or picture of something you're looking at. And that could be in lecture environment, couldn't it? But you need an external camera because when you select that, it's going to choose the one camera. It's going to be pointing at you. So bear that in mind. You can also upload files that might be relevant to your research. It could be a Word document, a PDF, or image file. Again, you need to upload. Now, you've got open dyslexia option. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the website. Say you struggle with dyslexia and you're struggling reading that text. Open up the extension and select open dyslexic. And it will open up the fonts for you. Some will find a lot easier to read and clearer. So that might be an option that could be beneficial for you. Now, we've got another option here called Auto tiles. So what we'll do is going to highlight a small paragraph there, open up the extension, and select an option that says Auto tiles. Let it work away. Now what this will do is we'll try and grab key points from that paragraph or information for you. So we'll have a look at that in a minute as well for you. And on the right, you've got visual projects. So these are all the projects I've got, which you know is the demo one and one I added here psychology so you might decide I'll deal with that another day so you just leave your psychology one on the module you're working with right and select save and okay let's go back to the original website for pro study open it up on the left and see what we got so first thing I need to do you see there's nothing in there is there so refresh and reload the page and if we go to the project at the top here We've now got that information that I've been adding earlier. And can you see now all the tiles come up on the right? It's color coded it red. So this is just random stuff I highlighted, wasn't it? Now all these are untagged. Now these options at the bottom, you can tag stuff. So for example, thumbs up option on there to tag. And I might put this as a little up heart option. You can come top right hand corner and you can access the filters quickly here as you can see them there. So you can untick what you want and what you don't want. So again, the filters are up to you to filter out your information. On the left, you can pin stuff. It will pin it straight to the top that you might be working with. So if you're doing a load of research and those categories, you need to work with specific ones, you can pin them and work with them at the top. If you unclick them, you see they go back into the tile section at the bottom. Now I've got an option here. If I tap on it, you can add your own comments to the text. So there I could add additional comments regarding that information if I wish as well. This will take you back to the original link, tapping on it. So you never lose where you got the source from. Info will give you all your research information. You can add your information by adding publish date or publisher if you know it. And click close. So your drop down arrow. We can edit that, copy the reference even. So we copied that reference, so you can now paste that reference. I just generally paste it into this Word document for you, so you can see the reference there for you. I'll show the references in a minute, and click Don't Save. You don't have to paste it, by the way. You can export the whole lot into a Word document as well, which I will show you. 
Also, drop down menu, you can copy as text, just copy, move it. So you might want to move it to a different project and even delete that if you wish as well. Now if you come up here, now if we look at the top here, it tells you where they come from. So we've got a link there, and you can see that's the internet link, World Wide Web, and then you've got a PDF link there. So it's giving the information there as well on your links, including the date and time you assess that. And we come down here, remember the image? We've got the JPEG image there as well. Now, what I'm going to do quickly with this, come to the top, we've got research tiles. So this is what we're currently looking at now. Now, if we go to files, if we can upload files. So I'm just going to, let's stick with the psychology one I did and put it into cognitive again. Let's choose a file. I'm going to upload any PDF as a demonstration and select upload. You can search for different sources and information on there as well. And now we've got the bookmarks. Now you know I added a bookmark earlier and that's the one I added and there it is. So if I tap on it, it's to take me straight back to that source. I can also trash that if you wish as well. And remember, if I click on here, you can change for different categories. And it will then give you different bookmarks as well if you've added them. Now come to export in a minute. Accessibility, really handy. So you can use a red background or green or choose any option you want. And also fonts. Times New Roman, for example, Courier, Open Dyslexic, or Comic Sans. Again, that's all personal preference. I'll leave that on default. And at the bottom here, you can change to zoom in and out, giving you the shortcut keys. And on the right, we've got the shortcut keys for the Mac to zoom in and out as well. References. Now, this is important. I'll show you how to export all your sources in a minute, but you need to choose your reference style. Have a little scroll down there, see what they've got. Now what you can do, if you can't find what you're looking for, type at the top. I'm just going to put site in there. And there you go. Site then right. And I'm going to save that. So I can use that as my main reference style when I export. So have a little play with that and try and find the correct one. And you can see they've got over 9,500. Even if it's not spot on, because there's so many variations, if you can just change a few bits, it's going to save you hours of research work. So you've got share option and at the end help which is really handy and jump down to show you step by step how to use it what i want to do i want to go back to export now you can choose what you want to export so i'm going to export the psychology and all the categories underneath i want to include references any comments you add you can include them as well bookmarks if you wish and you might just only want to export references only so we've got an option here, export to file, pro study. So you've got pro study on your computer. You can export it to there. Export to Dropbox. OneDrive is more likely when you're going to use. You get that free with your academic studies, Office 365. And export to Google Drive. But I'm going to export as a Word document, DOCX. And I'm going to select export to file. Let that work away. Might take a while, there's quite a few sources. Open it up, bottom left hand corner. Enable editing, and let's have a little scroll down. So on the left, we've got psychology title, page one of eight. Page two, we've got your table of contents. There you go, remember the red one, I created color coded cognitive. I've got all my information and my links underneath. And on the right, I've got all my information text that I highlighted. And as I scroll down, you can see all the information, including the image. And at the very end, we've got the bibliography of all your sources to work with. So it's a great way to store all your research and sources into one document. It'll be so good for your dissertation as well. So I'm going back to the website. So there's the basics of using the online version. That's pretty similar to the application ones on the Mac and Windows. So if you look at my video tutorials, you can have a look at them as well. But bear in mind, the Mac version has a few bugs in it, application installed on the Mac, which because they're not supporting it as much now. So the online version is the option to go to. Thanks for watching.